What's up guys, it's Andy with Andy's Angels and I'm here with some more content. Let's get it. So I got a new fish. Well, let's, let's backtrack a second. So I woke up this morning, come down when the lights turned on and I realized that my male sword tail was dead. So I did a pH check and I checked a little bit of the other parameters in the water. Everything seemed fine. So I'm thinking it was because last night I changed the heater to a higher heater and it actually turned the water up to uh, like five degrees higher than it, it was before, which is what I needed it to be. So I went to the store and bought this guy. So getting the store tank water in your tank is a huge no-no. So what you wanna do is get this fish out of the bag and the water, as much water as possible, out of your net. He wants the fishy to swim out on his own. Another thing I didn't tell you guys is that this couple right here, Romeo and Juliet, what I named them, have laid eggs again for me last night. And um, I took the eggs out. I did make a video because it was like a quick thing. I just had to drain some water out, fill another tank. And I took the eggs out and uh, we're gonna go check on them. I haven't checked on them yet. So we're gonna go look at them and see what they, if they've made it. Here's a quick video of their parents. That's mom right there, the veil, and that's dad. So I wound up using the little stand that I didn't use. I turned it sideways. I don't know why, but I don't know why, but I did that. And I uh, put the fish in here, got a heater on each. Once they hatch, I'll split them in half into each tank. So let's take a look. So the cool thing is I got this old school thing that has a knob that turns down the water when I turn it. Water when I turn it. So as we've turned the air down, there's the stone I moved, and there's all the eggs. When breeding angelfish, what you want to do is you want to set them out, set them up a slate. You want to separate them in their own tank once they've, uh, you know, paired off from your community tank. And what you want to do is you want to get them in their own tank at least a 20 gallon don't go any less than that and make it a 20 tall not a 20 long but i like to keep mine in a minimum of like a 30 gallon if it's possible unless i'm medicating them and a 40 gallon breeder so what you want to do is you want to keep them in one of those tanks and you also want to remove your hang on the back filter and get a sponge filter oh, also you don't want to have nothing on the on the bottom just a bare bottom tank so the eggs can't get lost once they fall off of your slate so for starters what you want to do is you want to let your fish um, pair off and you put them in your tank second once they've actually laid eggs what you want to do is you want to leave them and see what they do with these eggs because some fish will raise them and some fish will eat them right away or when they get spooked so you want to give them at least one chance to figure out what happens. Trust me, they'll lay a lot of eggs for you once they're comfortable in their tank. So if your fish did eat your eggs, what you want to do is wait for them to lay eggs again. You want to remove the slate that your egg that they lay the eggs on. You want to make sure you set that that uh, slate very vertical, up and down, so they can lay them. And make sure your heater's horizontal. If you put it vertical and they lay eggs on that they'll burn, they'll burn themselves and they won't be able to lay eggs again. Another thing you gotta keep in mind is how often you want your fish to lay eggs. So if you remove this slate, be ready for them to wanna lay eggs in a week. You don't have to harvest them or remove them or anything. You can just leave them there and they'll wind up eating them eventually. So 
if you're not trying to breed them for profit or if you're not trying to sell them and you're trying to just breed them just because, I would suggest you don't harvest every single batch because it's gonna be like two to 400 eggs every single time. Now, if you're trying to harvest them for money or for profit, what you wanna do is make sure you remove them as soon as they lay their eggs and put them in a separate tank so they can't eat your profit because each egg they eat is gonna be money out of your pocket. You wanna make sure that your tank is nice and warm at around 80 degrees. You wanna make sure that you have nothing that can harm them as a filter, a heater that can burn them. Make sure you keep the heater away from the eggs. Also, you wanna make sure it has an air stone close to the slate to where you can ventilate your eggs. The air stone is doing the job that the parents would do as fanning them and that keeps them from getting that white fungus that starts taking over your eggs and eating them. You also want to make sure you have a squeaky squeaky clean tank before you put your eggs in there. If you have fed in that tank and there has been fish in there before, there's a chance of planaria uh, grown which is a little white worm and that will eat all of your eggs. So make sure you've never fed in that tank. And a tip I have for you is just to, if you're gonna stick them in a 10 gallon tank, just drain out 10 gallons out of your water, out of the water from the parents and put them in two five gallon buckets and take them to your new tank. And then you can go ahead and do a water change for that tank and boom, everyone wins. You wanna make sure before you start breeding that you already have bought your brine shrimp this is an empty can, I actually keep some uh, baking soda in here. But you wanna make sure you keep this, uh, you buy yourself a, a high hatch rate brine shrimp because you don't want those little eggshells floating around your tank, it's just dirty. You wanna buy a high uh, hatch and what you also wanna do is make sure you keep it refrigerated. Do not go to the pet store and buy your cheapest brine shrimp because that's gonna be a waste of money and they're not cheap at all. A uh, can like this is, can go anywhere from a hundred bucks. I will make a video on hatching brine shrimp here in the coming up time when th once those eggs over there need them. So I just realized that I was murdering your ears with the uh, intake of the tank to go to the sump. So I'm sorry about that. We're changing locations now. We're here. It's a little quieter. Let's keep this talk. So now what I'm thinking about doing is making a little uh, rock a uh, cave system for my catfish in the tiger barb tank. I want to be able to find a spot for them to be able to swim and feel safe and I want to get them out of this 30 gallon tank. They just don't seem happy. Well, I'm not happy about them being there. So let's get them a switch. So this is the tank we'll be working on today. As you can see, it is well. the glass is well taken over with freaking algae and I'll be cleaning that and giving it a water change also. But we're going to try to make some caves right in this area for the catfish that are going in here. Let's get started. So I have these rocks and this little thing as well as what I have down here, which is a few rocks, but I was thinking of putting that bridge between those two and then adding a few on top. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of changing this filter. So now that it's filling, I also like to use this right here. It's called Prime. One cap full equals 50 gallons. So I just do one cap full even though this is a 45 and I didn't do 50 gallons, you always want to over, over, uh, overdo it on the dechlorinator.
Done. There it is. Now we'll wait for it to fill up and we'll see what it looks like. Now that this guy's all filled up, let's give a look. So there you go guys, here's the one we built. I'm thinking I'm gonna move some of these rocks and stand them there to make the holes a little smaller to where the catfish are the only ones that can actually go in there if they're being chased. and I'm gonna catch and bag these two guys. So now that we got these two in their new tank, I kid, I kid. Let's get these two guys in the bag and let's get them to acclimate to this tank. Oh, you guys are gonna love it here. Sometimes when you have a fish from this big, you gotta do a few of them at a time. So now these catfish are acclimated to this tank. We're also giving this guy a little cleanup. And we'll also give this guy a cleanup and the guppy tank a cleanup. And he's getting filled already. You go pretty. Now that they're empty, let's start filling these guys. So now that I got all the water changes done, let's go over to the eggs and pick out the little unfertilized ones and I'll show you how. So in order to tell which ones are your unfertilized ones, I don't know if you can see it, but right there's a white one. You want to remove those so they don't get that white fungus to go to your other ones and then that'll kill all your other eggs. So now that we've gotten all the unfertilized ones, you can see there, there's a mixture of them down there. But these are your main focus, so you want to turn your air back on. So now we got our air on. You can see the ones down there, they've moved and they're moving. And that's when you know you got enough ventilation going for your eggs. You want to have as much air as you can without tumbling your eggs all over the place. If, you don't, if that makes any sense. These you can tumble. Those you don't want tumbling and flying out of your slate. Now if we do everything right in no time, we should have some baby aim. So I went to Petco today and I bought five of those little shiners for the uh, little feeder shiners or whatever. I added five of them to the arowana tank and there's three. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys took a little bit of the information I gave you guys on the angelfish and how to pull their eggs. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week ahead. I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.